How we going, lads and lasses? It's me, Mugen. So everyone loved my last video, Berserk, which was actually really crazy. I wasn't expecting so many people who like Berserk and manga to see that. So thank you if you watched it. And I decided I'll just do another manga video because over the Christmas break, while I was back home, I didn't have my PC, couldn't play anything, couldn't really edit anything new. So I ended up reading All You Need Is Kill by Hiroshi Sarukazaka. I was really excited to read this one, especially because it was only two volumes. So I started it the day before, like in the middle of the night, and then I ended up finishing it the next day within two hours. So if you don't know, all you need is kill follows KG Kidia. He is a new grunt that's been put into the United Defense Force as they fight a unknown entity known as the Mimics. Very terrifying alien-like beings that shoot these spikes, these javelins from their mouths and we don't really understand where they came from we get the idea that they came from space it's that cool idea of how this is the scenario you don't really need to know where these monsters came from or how they got here it's just that them being here changes the scenario drastically so it takes place him waking up from a dream of him dying on the battlefield and throughout that day he goes through things and he starts to notice that oh i remember doing this in my dream we're going to do this next and we've got to go to training and this is what they're going to serve at the cafeteria today the next day they ship out to battle it's in battle that everything kind of goes a bit awry and kg and all his friends die in the midst of battle it's only when he dies that he wakes up in his bed the next day then we start to see the rules of the scenario that we're in with kg no matter where he dies or how he dies he will always wake up in his bed two days before battle. And so he's stuck in this endless time loop of being prepped for battle and then end up going to it regardless. I'm going to be talking about the spoilers of All You Need Is Kill. It isn't really a review, it's just my thoughts and what I kind of liked and what I didn't like. And is it a recommendation? Well, if you feel like you still want to read it despite what you've watched, then go ahead. At first he's distraught and he doesn't believe it, but then he starts to truly acknowledge that this is the reality I'm put in. I can't escape it. All I can hope to do is learn to survive. And so with every battle, he's determined to actually survive longer and longer in that battle and train himself by losing and dying. Think of a video game that you may have played and every time you fight, you lose and you die and you respawn and you try again. Every time you die, you learn again. But with KG, this is real life. Every pain is felt, every death hurts like hell. Like the way he dies is awful every single time. You can see it in his face every time he wakes up. Think of it of yourself when you wake up from a nightmare and you have this sudden jolt knowing that you're awake and you're safe. That's KG every day because by the end of the battle, he'll always die because he's not strong enough. He's a grunt. He isn't a warrior. He doesn't have that natural talent. What I think is really, really cool about the loops is that Cage himself finds different scenarios in which he can better himself. He finds different ways in which he can become stronger. He finds better ways in which to kill the Mimics. The Mimics are interesting because at first when he decides to try and kill one, he's terrified. And then he has to train himself not only to kill one, but learn to suppress the fear of dying. Regardless of him knowing he's going to die, he still has the initial fear of something that wants to kill him. I think one of the really cool things that KG experiences as someone who sees his situation being totally awful and unbearable in having to die and start the day all over again is that he tries to find the positives in having death on his side. He is able to cultivate himself into a warrior he never thought he could. And when it's put into the context of war and battle, most people who go into war and battle are going to go in and never come back out. And there are those one in 100 people who go in and they survive and they learn from that battle and they go to the next one and maybe then they die. And then there's the one in one million who then survive every single battle and become that warrior just through sheer luck, determination, pain, and through skill. KG is just your average Joe, but because he has death on his side, he is then cultivated into this kind of warrior that people look at and think that's that one in a million. And you can tell that this loop does take a toll on his mentality. It's all he thinks about, it's all he cares about. There's no real time in his day to engage with people in all these things because every time the day loops, people forget the things that he's told them. And he has a list of things that he has to do. So whenever there comes a time 
of respite for him, he can never really enjoy it because he knows he'll do it the next day. And because time is constantly moving, he feels like he needs to hurry up and not waste a day so that he can get out of this loop sooner. What I do love is how he writes every single loop on his hand. And you can really tell with the number drawn on his hand how he's becoming more and more susceptible to the loops and how they're affecting his mind. A lot of the other characters in the manga are really cool. I like Rita, I like Shasta. Those are kind of the two most important characters besides Keiji. There is Rachel, but you don't really learn a lot about Rachel. You just see her as a romantic interest for Keiji, but he doesn't pursue it because he knows that him spending time with her would be pointless because she'd forget about him the next day. Same with all the other things that he has to do. He has to go to Shasta and get her to remake the battle axe every single day. The battle axe is something he has to learn to use every single time he loops. The reason being is because he saw Rita Vrataski, the pretty much hero of the army and the warrior that survives every battle has. And it's something that he thinks makes sense to use and something he wants to emulate. The series really does give you this cool analogy of how war is repetitive. Even though Keiji's stuck in a loop, the war isn't ended by the end of the manga. He's out of the loop and he has lost someone close to him. Regardless of the loop, war will continue to proceed and progress and in a way loop for as long as possible. No matter how many times you think you can also save the same person every single loop and make sure that everything stays the way you expect it, and the way you predict it will happen because you've done this 160 times. But like most war, it always ends with someone losing a life, which in a way, even though being a sci-fi kind of sign-in story about a guy stuck in a time loop, fighting these extraterrestrial beings. It's an extremely human story about how humans cope and deal with warfare or battle. That's I think where the title of the manga is really at play because for Keiji, the only thing he needs to know is to kill. All he needs to learn is to kill, is to fight the mimics. That's the only thing he needs to understand. By the end of the manga, it is something that he really has to dig into and think of nothing else about, but then just to win and kill. And it is kind of a bittersweet win because by the end of it, of course, he loses Rita. Rita, I think is a really cool character because you can see over time of the loops, even though she doesn't remember Keiji, you can see how there's more to her than just this unemotive, standoffish, and kind of docile character. I know it's a very tropey thing to have that and have them come out of their shell, but I think it was really cool in how they presented the fact that she knew he was in a loop and she asked how many times you've been in the loop. I think that was a really cool way to end a first volume. By the time we start the second volume is when we start to see Rita's backstory. This is where I kind of get into the point where I feel like maybe I'm getting into the dislikes of what I think hinder all you need is kill. And that is because Rita, when we learn about who she is and where she came from in the US, she has the name Rita, which isn't her real name. And we never learn her real name, it's blacked out on the page. And it's something that I thought was really cool because you're not really meant to know who she was because this is her identity now. She used it to get into the army, she used it and vowed to kill every mimic on earth. But with Rita, you learn so much about who she is, why she got where she was, how she went into a loop, how she learned how to calm down soldiers who were maybe going to pass away, how her loop was different from Kaiji's. She wouldn't die, but she would kill the same mimic every time and that would always restart the loop. And she learned from it and got better at it. And she got the battle ax and she became the warrior Valkyrie that we know today in her red jacket. So we learn so much about her. We don't learn a lot about Keiji. We learn that he moved into the army because he wanted to get away from his hometown because of a broken heart. And he doesn't really say much more else than that. With Rita, we have a complete understanding of why she hates the mimics, why she wants to fight, why she wants to protect others, and why she paints her jacket red, especially by the end, which is really, really cool. But it does feel somewhat standoffish because why do I need to know about her backstory and not the main character. We learned so much about Rita just before Keiji finally confronts her about the loops and she's finally happy to meet someone who has been in those loops and experienced the things she's experienced that she breaks down into tears, which is a really cool way of these two characters meeting because Keiji is not meeting her for the first time, but Rita is meeting Keiji for the first time. And it's something that I think really feels worth it and interesting is getting all this information of how the loops happen, finally understanding Rita is more than just a decorated warrior she is someone extremely special uh, as a person, especially with Keiji. There's a connection of being 
two people who have experienced the same thing. And it, it's cool in how he has to go meet her again for the second time, knowing that she's been out of a loop, but still feeling like they've known each other for a long time, even though they've known each other for a day. As he says now, by the end is, how did you know Rita? It's, I actually only met her yesterday, which I think is a great panel and a, and a fantastic line. That's such a great line. It's not cheesy, it feels genuine. So with Rita, it is really cool in how she adds layers to the story, especially within the loop. Also revealing the truth of how the loops work and by the end, one of them has to die and all you need is kill becomes the final litany for both characters to survive. Whoever wins with the best skill will be the one to win. And of course, Keiji wins because he knows how Rita fights. Rita doesn't know how Keiji fights because he's been through so many loops and he's seen how she moves, how she fights and how she kills. And so of course he wins. And it's a bittersweet one because she knew it would happen. But she does give him this, this hope that he needs to carry on the fight as he is the new warrior. And while I am a bit remiss that Rita had this huge backstory that was really interesting even though not knowing her real name for whatever reason and then having KG be a little bit of his backstory and now becoming essentially the new Rita it puts me in this position where I feel like I have to say that there should have been more I do feel like this was really more than just a two volume manga I do feel like there could have been many many more volumes and I actually wish there were because we didn't have to find out where the mimics came from but I think it would have been interesting to see more of how KG would have interacted with someone else who then got a loop and how he would have dealt with that. Could he have changed it? Could he have found a way to find a loophole in the loop, essentially? I like a lot how they don't make time loops comedic and they make it feel genuine in that it's a state of living that can take a toll on a person. Similar to how war can take a toll on a person. You fight multiple battles, you fight 160 battles just like KG, you're going to be worn down because even though his have been the same battle he's fought every day, 160 times, he is still going through battles, even though they're the same, but different at the same time. He's still going through war like any green <laughs> new soldier would, which is really, really cool. But I think what is interesting of, I guess with my complaint that we didn't get a lot of Keiji's backstory and why I wish there were more manga volumes is because this felt like his origin story in a way. Rita had this whole story of her commander that she lost and he was the one who introduced the idea of talking about nonsense in order to calm down a soldier who was dying or who was scared and it was something that could really help and give hope to people who were terrified of death and terrified of dying, too scared to kill. With Keiji it does feel like this is his origin story and he learned that from Rita with the whole green tea and everything like that and being there with the person until they die, which is really, really special. I think it's well written. I think this story is so well written. It's so well drawn as well. I haven't even talked about the artwork, but the artwork is incredible. You have so many different faces of KG as well is that even though we don't learn so much about him and where he came from, you feel like you really see all sides of him. You see a mental side of determination, despair, fear, death, many times of death and that's what's also kind of horrifying is you're not really worried about him dying you're more worried about him losing his mentality and losing his mind to the idea that you know what like what will happen if I go nuts because guess what he's just going to be caught in the same loop again and again and again regardless of dying he will go back to the same so at what point does his mind break because he can't kill himself he tried that and you see what happens. He just wakes up in the bed again seconds later. I do think there is a lot of setup and payoff in this, especially with the mimics and the antennas and the reasons of how the loops actually work with the Nexus. That's really cool because I didn't think it would be something so simple, but it was there and it was slowly fed to you of with the headaches and even with the book that Keiji reads, it's later revealed in the story, apparently, halfway through who the real killer is. And then near the end when Rita and Keiji have to fight, she reveals, of course, that the fact that their minds have been warped by the loop, that they are now in 10A. So one of them have to die before they kill the Nexus. Otherwise, the, the loop will continue and the war will never end. So one of them has to go. This is uh, really, really cool in a lot of ways. I think it's so unique in how they portray that I and mean, how they portray a very small story that literally takes place around one day in an infinite number of loops, but then has a grander story and of course, an origin story for KG. 
I do really wish that there were more volumes because I felt like there was so much more to experience, especially as Keiji maybe grew to become the person that Rita was. She was a Valkyrie and she became the monocle full metal bitch, you know, and then he became Killer Cage, which feels like there was meant to be more. Of course, there won't be more, but I would love to know where Hiroshi was going to take it, you know. I'd love to know where he was maybe thinking of taking it even further, if he had any ideas like that. If you are interested in like a sign-in which has a really cool loot mechanic, an interesting sci-fi premise, then you gotta watch this. I think that this has a lot of character development in a lot of different ways. The two main characters, of course, Rita and Keiji, you see different sides to them in so many cool ways. Um, I do think other characters could have been utilized more, but I think the whole point is, of course, is to protect the characters that you meet along the way. And that is kind of the burden of being a warrior, especially one that has the ability to kill and also protect those close to you. The artwork is very, very well done. It was illustrated by Takeshi Obata, and I'd never seen his artwork before, um, but I gotta say, I'm, I'm a big fan. Like, it's incredible. The amount of graphic violence that you're able to show in the way he's drawn things is unique in the fact that how the mimics kill is with the javelins, and the javelins aren't just like hard metal. They are this extraterrestrial, material that pierces flesh and kind of obliterates it along the way there's a shot of kg when he gets his arm and side blown off and it's incredible piece because it really feels like it hasn't been shot with something man-made it's been destroyed and obliterated by something otherworldly which is really cool the action does feel hard to follow sometimes i will say that but at the same time it just looks really really awesome I think the reason maybe it is hard to follow is because there's so much going on. Maybe because it's meant to feel like you being not a warrior may not understand fully what's happening. But when you can understand what's happening, it feels great. Especially when they portray KG and Rita as being a whirlwind of blade and death. It looks, it looks really cool. And just seeing all these mimics being destroyed by this whirlwind through the battlefield. It does feel worth it as well when KG gets a win. When he kills his first mimic, when he learns that he can only kill so many with ammunition, that's why he wants the axe. And then him killing hundreds and being 50 minutes into battle and he loses consciousness because he fought so hard and well that he actually won, but he died by the time he could survive the rest of the battle, which is really awesome. You really do feel the small wins every time he goes through and you feel the defeats like, the deaths they draw are insane in that you feel like, man, that was a rough run. It's like watching someone play a roguelike. You see a good run and then you see a really bad run and you learn from that and you try again. All in all, the story as well and the themes of how characters live for the little things and, you know, you take from people that you meet along the way, especially what it seems like in this journey of war and battle, that the people you meet, you need to remember them because they may not be there the next day. And all you need to remember for the next day is to keep going and of course kill but there's more to it than that because i think by the end with kg of course not painting his jacket being red but being blue because it was her favorite color of the blue skies is that you need to remember what you're fighting for you're not killing just to survive you have to kill for a tomorrow and of course works well with the analogy of a time loop is that you're fighting for a tomorrow i'm i know i'm putting down some negatives with there not being many volumes and i wish there were more and having the story progress more than just one loop maybe more with other characters in the future but the amount of story that they were able to cram and create and character development they were able to show especially the artwork as well in just two volumes and have me feel like you know what i'd love to read this again is amazing because it's such a short read you could read it again you could read it again in like a day and it feels like you know what i forgot some things that i missed last time I'm genuinely surprised this doesn't have an anime adaptation. I gotta say, surely one day. All in all, this being my second manga I read after Berserk, I'm not disappointed. I don't feel like I'm putting it up to the standard of Berserk because it's kind of hard and, you know, a bit, a bit disingenuous for other people to compare it to the best thing you've ever read. All in all, I, I loved it. I loved this manga. It was incredible. This was a, another manga video, which I was excited to do anyway. I'm glad I read something straight after Berserk. Let me know what you guys think. Have you read All You Need Is Kill? Have you only watched the movie? Do you want to read it now? I'd love to know. Also, if you have some more manga recommendations that are like All You Need Is Kill, maybe the light novels that are like two volumes, five, let me know. I'd love to see. Also, for everyone who's watched the Berserk video I posted, look, I'm, I got this for Christmas. 
It's actually really cool. I got this Berserk hoodie. It's from Etsy. That's my drip. That's my drip I got for Christmas, and I'm very happy with it. So all the Berserk fans, um, that's for you guys. Appreciate everyone giving me their manga recommendations. The list is getting bigger. And I think that's good, but also kind of bad. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I'm going to definitely read more manga. Um, I've already written a list and I've already got some stuff. I'm actually reading something right now and hopefully I can make another video maybe a week or two. And, uh, you know, we also do some streams. I'll do some gameplay stuff, you know, talk about other stuff besides manga, movies and TV eventually, especially when I can go outside again. My name's Mugen, lads and lasses, and I'll see you next time.